is Sophie Lawson from sophielawson.com and this is episode 15 of the Sophie Art Podcast which is a little podcast I do each week about art and things <laughs> and this one is another one about the things and it's about flotation tanks because yesterday I had my first experience in a flotation tank so I thought I would just I thought I'd do a little podcast about my experience. Show notes and everything for this podcast at sofreeart.com. I've also just started my doing my YouTube channel again. Um, and you can find that at youtube.com slash Sophie Lawson. Or you can also go sophielawson.com slash YouTube. Uh, I'm recording this one in the park. So if you hear any strange noises, <laughs> that's why. So I thought I'd start by just a little intro on what uh, flotation tanks are. Um, and then I'll do a little thing about what, it, what I felt like before, during the session and after. So a flotation tank is, it's basically, well, it can either be like a room, a little room, or a little tank and it's just big enough it's probably like about the size of a double bed so you can fully lay out on it and it's filled with I think it's about 15 inches of water with a load a load of salts I think it's called Emerson salts or something and there's so much salt in the water that um, you can't help but float so you're, you go into this tank or, or this room and it's pitch black you can't feel anything because the water is the water and the air is the same temperature as your body so you end up not even being able to feel your body so you, you can't see anything you can't hear anything because it's basically like sort of soundproof I guess um, so you end up, it's also known as a sensory deprivation tank. So you end up in being in this place where it, it, well they say it's like uh, zero gravity I think. So you end up feeling like you're floating through in nothingness. And so that's basically what it is. I'll put a link in the show notes um, explaining it a bit more. But I heard about it first on the Ascend podcast because they had I'll actually link link to that episode as well because they had a like an expert on about float tanks and he was talking about some of his experiences and it just sounded like something I would like to try but I was also quite scared so because I'm 38 and I've only just recently started swimming I've I'm only just started learning how to swim so for like 37 years or something I was pretty much scared of the water really so the thought of being in an enclosed space like floating in the water there's, there's, I would never have done that before but since I started swimming I've, I've like sort of enjoyed well I really enjoy being under the water I find it um, like a it's like another world or something so that sort of made me feel like I would be able to maybe try a flotation tank but I was still really quite scared I wouldn't say scared it was more apprehensive um, but the one I went to there's two in the local area um, one is in Exeter and another one is in Totnes and so I chose the Totnes one which is a 30 minute train ride and it's the Oasis Centre and it was £30 for 90 minutes which is 60 minutes in the tank and 30 minutes to shower before and after because you have to shower to it's for like hygiene to keep the water nice and clean Um, but before I went in I watched a couple videos the night before I watched some YouTube videos about like beginners tips and stuff and a couple of things I remembered, actually remembered while I was in, while I was in the tank, was somebody said to put your hands up, like 
float on the water with your arms by your head, but not touching anything, because it apparently that's like the most open posture you can have. And I've never tried that before, but when I watched that video, I I did a quick meditation in that pose just to sort of see what it felt like. So that was the posture I had when I was in the tank. And if I hadn't watched that video, I would have just had my arms down by my side. Um, and the other thing was they said about making sure you don't get water in your eyes because there's so much salt in it. Um, it will like it will sting. So that was another thing that I was aware of, which means when you're in the tank, you want to be really still and. I'll talk about it in a minute, but any slight movement actually moves. It has quite a big effect, so you have to be really, really still. So, I say, I wasn't so much scared, it was just, I was a bit nervous, because I didn't know what it was going to be like. I didn't know if I was going to like it. Um, and the fact that you're in such a small, quite a small space, in pitch black, it there's an element of sort of, fear I suppose about it but I was still really excited so I was I was both scared and excited at the same time um, so the main reason I want to do the float tanks is because I I think going in the float tank will help quieten my mind I guess and help with awareness for the lucid dreams so I've actually got the brochure here from the Oasis Floating Therapy <laughs> Therapy Session uh, Center, and there's some little things here about it explains what a flotation room is, what does it feel like, and what can a float do for you. So I thought I would quickly say some of those things. And apparently, the float floating room or floating tank can help with reducing stress levels. Increasing human potential, alleviate aches and pains, and overcoming unwanted habits. So overcoming unwanted habits, the float tank has proven to be an excellent environment in which to tackle problems such as excess weight, smoking, drinking, and all sorts of phobias. Alleviating aches and pains, it says, floating stimulates production of endorphins the body's natural painkillers, which combined with the letting go of muscular tension, helps the release of aches and pains in joints and muscles, including headaches, neck and back pains, and even arthritis and rheumatoitis. <laughs> the increased production of endorphins can also greatly help to relieve anxiety and depression without having to resort to drugs. Reducing stress levels, it says it says quite a lot there but again it's to do with the chemicals and stuff it says floating also heightens our awareness of how we relate to stressful situations and with re regular floating we can learn how to manage our stress more effectively and the one I was most interested in is the increasing human potential and it says during a float you produce slow brainwave patterns called theta waves what you actually experience is the highly creative twilight state, similar to that which occurs when you are between sleeping and waking. In this altered state of consciousness, you may have sudden insights, answers to problems, or perhaps release of a creative blockage. Ad additionally, research indicates that floating balances the relationship between the right and left hemispheres of the brain. So I thought that was quite interesting. And like that, what they talk about there with the theta brain waves, that's all linked in with lucid dreaming because it's during that phase that you um, have like your visions and hallucinations and stuff. So it's kind of all going into the same area. So that's what I was most interested in. Um, and so that's it really. So like I said, I was a bit scared or nervous before um, but I turned up and the lady was really really nice like really nice um, 
and she was talking about how she's uh, been floating as well and how really nice it is and stuff so she showed me around and I had these had these earplugs so that you put the earplugs in so that the salt water doesn't go into your ears um, well that's the theory anyway <laughs> and then what else was there yeah she, it was just basically you got like a little light on the side and you have complete control over the door so you can open or close it whenever you want but um, when you close it you've still got the light in there with a little light switch and there's also a bottle of like fresh water so if you do get some of the salt water in your eyes you can clean it with the water but um, she also said about music they can play music but I wanted it to be totally silent so that like, all the senses were disappeared but um, she recommended doing a little bit of music at the start so we had 10 minutes of like relaxing music and then what would happen is at the end when it was over after the 60 minutes they play um, ocean waves so that's when you know it's time to sort of come out so I got into the tank um, having put my earplugs in and stuff and I was a bit before I got in there I was a bit unsure how to actually get into position because it's such a weird thing um, and it is very slippery she said that so you have to be quite careful but I was just I was a bit unsure really how to sort of what I should be doing and you're completely on your own in there so even though she explains what to do there's still a li little bit of like am I doing it right or something but it was quite easy really I just sat on my knees and then um, sat on my bum and then just like put my arms back and floated <laughs> that was it really and then um, for the first like 10 minutes it must have been 10 minutes because she said that's how long the music would be I found the music actually quite distracting and I was sort of floating there thinking please can you turn the music off now I sort of wanted the music to be turned off um, but during that like 10 minutes I was every now and again slightly like t I could feel the side of the tank like my finger would touch the tank my toe and this is where um, you slightly touch the side of the tank and you just bounce right off and somebody said on one of the YouTube videos that if you start pushing off the side when you touch it you can end up sort of bouncing around like a pinball so I already knew that so I was only gently touching the sides and I would say after about 15 minutes I never touched the side again so I must have been totally floating in the middle but there's so much I could talk about um, for the first it's really hard to know what the time's like in there because the time sort of get it seemed to get messed up because it was a 60 minute session but it, it seemed to last only like 20 minutes it seemed about 25 minutes really so it went really quickly but there was a period at the start where it seemed to be like dragging and I was almost thinking to myself I don't know if I can do this in 60 minutes I was sort of just it was a weird feeling of um, yeah I just I didn't know whether I was going to be able to do it but then all of a sudden at some point I just sort of relaxed I guess that was it the tank really taught me I think that I've never actually um, relaxed before really because you're lying there so you can fully relax your body but what I noticed was every so often I thought my body was fully relaxed and I would sort of realise it was slightly tense and I kept being able to go even more relaxed with the body and, and by the end I was like so relaxed and it is true what they say that you can't feel your body like it's every, all these things that I felt in there are quite hard to explain really because it is such a unique um, environment like I've never experienced anything like it before and I didn't know what it was going to be like but it 
it wasn't anything like anything I could have thought it would be like, if that makes sense. But I don't know really how what to say about this, but I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll talk about three or four of the main sensations I felt in there. So, as soon as the music stopped, that's when it got really quite, um, just, um, I don't know how to explain it, surreal I suppose, because when the music stopped, it was complete silence and darkness, and um, I started hearing, I, I must have had a little bit of water trickling in through my through my um, earplug, I don't know if that's normal or not, but I could actually hear, and not just hear, but feel the water inside my head. <laughs> it was it was really weird, and at first it was a bit. At first, I was a little bit concerned, as if I was thinking, should this be happening? <laughs> um, you know, is it is this dangerous or something? But after a period of time, I just decided to listen to it instead, and. Even though it was a bit weird, I kind of liked it, and it was it was as if you could hear water, like the water every time it went in your ear, you could hear and feel it going down all the canals and into into your head, and it made me feel like my head was hollow. And the other thing was because you can't feel your body, the only way I can explain that is it it felt like I was a head floating in the water. I know it sounds weird, but that's the only way to explain it, really. So I had that weird feeling of the, wa the water in my head, which I ended up liking by the end. And the one thing that really shocked me was, um, like, because you all your senses have gone, everything you hear and feel is heightened. So like my I could my heartbeat was just uh, constant. I could hear my heartbeat. But having said that, there was times when it it sort of stopped as if I don't know whether I don't know if it did stop. It kind of stopped, but <laughs> it, there was periods where I didn't notice it. But um, th at first, that was quite shocking. How hearing my heartbeat, um, and I don't know if that's because you got the eardrums, the, the earplugs in, or something. But so you could hear your heart beating, and this is mad, but because. Um, Something I've noticed before in the past is if I shut my eyes and um, move my eyes left and right, I can get these little like um, bolts of lightning sort of in my in my eyelids, which I don't know what that is, but because it was so dark in there, I thought what I'll do is I'll open my eyes and I'll move my eyes left and right just to see if I could create these lights, like. Um, with my eyes open and I can't remember if I did because what I noticed instead was that I could hear my eyes moving <laughs> and I think it was my eyelashes rubbing against my like skin but that's what it's like like everything you can just hear everything and it is it's very strange um, at f first I thought this isn't relaxing at all it's it was just so so like strange that that's why I thought I don't know if I could stay in here for an hour because it's like I said it's just really weird but um, you st you soon just not only get used to it but you start like enjoying it um, but one of the, the craziest sensations I had in there was this was just after the music stopped um, now the tank is like the size of a double bed it's about that it might be a bit bigger, but there's no way that I could lie sideways in it, head to toe. I, I would touch the wall. So there's no way I could be spinning around. There's no way you could spin around in it. But I had this insane sensation as if my whole body was spinning around. And like at first I, was, I, was, I thought to myself, oh, I've started spinning. But because it, because it kept spinning and I didn't touch the wall, I thought, I can't be spinning, because if I was spinning for this long, I would have touched the wall. <laughs> um, 
so that's really weird. I don't know what that was going on there, but the one that was really mad was I started feeling myself tilting forwards. So it was as if you, I was spinning f like forwards, which is really weird. And it, it, it just felt like me and the whole tank with all the water was now vertical. <laughs> um, and that was just, that was, I've never felt anything like that ever. Um, and it's, I would say it feels like what I would imagine floating in space would be like but obviously I've never done that so I don't know what's going on there with all this like feeling yourself moving when you're not um, so that's the main feelings I had really um, it really increased my well something that definitely happened was I had large periods where I couldn't stop talking I think for the most part, I, I was trying so hard to stop talking or stop thinking, but I just noticed I was thinking too much, and I think that was holding me back a bit from really sort of letting go. But um, I don't know whether that's just the way I normally am, and it's for the first time I've noticed how much thinking is going on, or whether maybe I was nervous because it's the first time or something, but. Um, hopefully that's one of the main things I'm going to try and work on is I'm going to try and work on that with meditation is to stop like the thinking I guess try to just get silence um, there's a couple of other things I was going to talk about which is well one little thing is um, anyone who wears hormone patches um, they work they stayed on in the water because I was a bit concerned maybe the salty water would uh, make them come off because that happens when I go swimming with the um, like the was it crawling <laughs> I can't say that word um, but so the salty water that they use in the float tank doesn't affect the um, hormone patches um, well the main thing is it was just a very strange experience and like I said nothing like I thought uh, nothing like I could ever have thought <laughs> um, but I'm I really enjoyed it and I enjoyed it so much that when I came out I actually booked another um, like block of five sessions so I'm going to be going back because like the first 30 minutes it was a bit I was unsure if I was gonna um, enjoy this but by the end when it finished it had gone so quickly and I just wanted to stay back in there. And when I woke up today, I, I felt, I felt really relaxed. But I also just felt like I wanted to get back in there. Oh, and something else that's mad is, um, last night I had a, a couple of really strange dreams. Uh, one of them was sort of a semi-lucid dream where, um, ah, oh, well, that was just really weird. It's that was very weird. And um, this like dream person came up to me and said um, I think you should look at your hands and I said why I just thought to myself why should I look at my hands and when I looked at my hands I became lucid and I sort of saw all of the like channels in my hand but when I looked back at the dream character their eyes had turned into little black like pinholes <laughs> And that was a really weird dream, but the one that was really very strange, which I think is linked to the float tank, is I was I was um, sleeping and I woke up. I don't know if I woke up or if, if I dreamt that I woke up, but I woke up and I normally like to sleep on my right, and that's where I feel more comfortable, but I always sleep on my left as well. So I'm all through the night, i constantly turning over. So if I ever wake up and I'm on my left, I'll um, always say to myself, oh, I'm going to sleep on my, my right now. So I woke up and I was sleeping on my left and I said, oh, I'm going to sleep on my right now. So I started rolling myself over to, to my right, but I was already sleeping on my right. So <laughs> my, my body had, my, my body or my mind had 
had the sensation that I was sleeping on my left, but I was actually sleeping on my right. <laughs> and I, I'm sure that was to do with the with the um, like the float tank. So it was really weird because I was trying desperately to turn over to my right, but I couldn't. And then I suddenly realised that I was already on my right. <laughs> so that was very strange. So I did have a, a few strange dreams last night. But um, when the to go back to the float tank, when the session was finished and she started playing the ocean music or the ocean waves, um, I, I, re I said, OK, I have to get out now. So um, I put my hand out to, to the light switch but it wasn't where I thought it was and I thought it was going to be because when I like lied down it was right by my hand but suddenly it was I put my arm right out and I couldn't touch it <laughs> and it ended up being that I had moved right to the other side of the tank I was like completely disorientated and I was trying to reach for the door and I couldn't get to the door either and then I got to the handle but I couldn't quite push it <laughs> so I, it, getting out was a little bit um, it was just very disorientating, I think. That's the best way to describe it. And even when I got out, it was still slightly as like disorientating feeling, I guess. And something else about the tank is... Because I didn't realise just how um, hot it was going to be in there. It's, it's not hot... Well, it is hot, but it's... Apparently it's the same as your body so you can't feel anything but the air I didn't realize the air was also going to be the same temperature so um, it was almost like to some extent being like in a sauna or something um, and so what happened was I started to feel I could start to feel each individual like speed of sweat dripping down my my belly which was and that was quite nice as well but um, because I remembered um, if not, not to make movements and stuff. So if you wanted to itch that, you'd probably be better to just leave it. Um, so that's another mental thing, I suppose. You can practice not itching itches, which I've done that before in meditation. And I qu kind of quite enjoy that because every part of your body wants to itch, but you can actually mentally stop yourself itching. And then what I've noticed is, if you do that, the itch starts to bounce around your body. And then at some point, it just totally disappears. So you can actually totally ignore itches. Um, so there's loads of little things about that session that um, sort of fascinated me, really. And I would definitely recommend it because it is so strange. So... That's it for this week's podcast. It was it was something I really I've been wanting to do for a while, and it was nice to finally do it. And I think it's going to be very um, powerful. I think moving forwards, but it certainly showed me how much um, I need to work on quieting my mind because I thought I had quite a um, quiet mind, but that really showed me that I haven't um, and that's it really so I put show notes in I put links and stuff in the show notes which you can find at sofreeart.com and you can find me at sophielawson.com my youtube is youtube.com slash sophielawson and if you have any questions or anything you can send me an email at sophie at sophielawson.com and I think that's it for this week this week's quote go on, mate hey, you right? you want a song? yeah yeah <laughs> cool. brilliant just recording the podcast what are you doing? recording the podcast are you? yeah hey. see, see you on the podcast I'll be on it yeah <laughs> right, let's do some randomness mate you love the randomness don't you? Yeah. I knew you did <laughs> I knew you were sitting next to a tree I thought if you're sitting next to a tree, you must be like loving the run of this, mate. Right. What should we do? Skills. What? Skills.
skills. Skills, mate. Mm. That's funky, though, isn't it? Mm. So. Sitting under a tree. <laughs> Sitting under a tree. Sitting under a tree. <laughs> With a doggy. With a doggy. Sit in a tree. I'm really happy. Sit in a tree. With a doggy. Sit with a doggy. Sit in a tree. With a doggy. Sit in a tree. I can't change my chords. Because my mind is on something else. It's mad, isn't it? How about something nice? I wrote this for my daughter. This podcast, is it? Mm. Sarah! I love you! The thing is, right, I like, like, with life, just that, it's like lots of little chopped up bits, isn't it? Mm. Life is like lots of chopped up bits. Do you think so? I suppose it is when you look back, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's Those chopped. Chapters. Exactly. It's just look, and then, so I'm reflecting that with just like, or like going, concepts, man, concepts. Do you know what this podcast was about? What was it about? Flotation tanks. What was it? Yeah. Have you ever... Have you ever... No, I've heard of, like, flotation tanks. Mm. So... It's like sensory what? deprivation. Is it really? Yeah. What's the point of that? It's like you're floating in nothingness. Nothingness, yeah, yeah. but it is, like, so... What, so therefore you don't exist? Well, at first I was a bit scared of it. But by the end... It was like my body it disappeared sort of thing. Yeah, but that, that means... What about your consciousness, though? Yeah, my mind was talking too much. That's the problem. That's the one thing. Uh, uh, when you're doing it? Yeah, you yeah. Can't, you're not going to be able to shut off the mind, are you? Well, apparently you can. I don't think you can lose your mind. Mate, the, the, the brain chatters all the time, doesn't it? Yes. So then you're in that... Exactly. So then you're in that... You've put yourself in that experience to lose it, and then you're probably thinking... You know, you're thinking about that experience then, aren't you? You're thinking about thinking. Thinking about thinking, yeah. Mm. You're thinking about, like, trying to stop it. Mm. It's like, it's relentless. Mm. It's relentless. I think you can do it, though. Well, you can yeah. when you sleep. <laughs> and then the dreams get you as well. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're all right. We're, we're, we've just... I mean, this is, like, um, artistic it's, as... It's gold. Yeah, but it's natural. It's life. What's right. your name, by the way? Bungle. Bungle. Nice. Nah, Nick. <laughs> Sophie. Sophie? Yeah. Alright, okay. We said it because you hear a lot, of, a lot about it on social media. Trying, you know, but that's just a, that's another label, isn't it? Ah, but the thing is, right, it's a big debate about, um, right, I'm a logical person, right? Mm. So, someone says that I feel like something else. I, I don't think you can feel like something else because you'd have to be that something else to feel that something else and maybe it's a misconception of the whole the whole argument you know that someone says I feel like I'm in the wrong body right but someone can't feel yeah, something you'd unless have to know. you'd have to know it yeah so, so you can't say that logically that you, I feel I should be in something else what you can say is that I feel I should be this but, 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 but how can you feel something that you're not it's weird though because you do feel like you do feel it you do feel... Feel you what? Can, you can feel that you're lying when you're not... You're, when you're not yourself. But what is yourself, you know? I mean, maybe it's just like, um... I don't think that you... Like, you know, it's like... I couldn't say, I feel I should be a tree. Not... Uh, right? Because, what tree? Yeah. <laughs> like, what... That it doesn't make sense. Right, so it's, it's obviously something else. Something is not feeling right to you or to anyone, but I don't think it's the, the, the kind of, I think I should be another, like, sex. I don't get that. Now, I was thinking, 
we're trying to understand this, was like, some blokes are just more feminine, mm. but that's a scale anyway. You know, you've got the macho guys going around, you know, doing it all pumping up, you know. You've got an extreme, haven't you? You've I got... think that's what it is, a scale. Yes, exactly, so yeah. maybe that maybe there's a confusion there. You feel that you're lower on the yeah. scale of, of, of maleness, therefore mm. you think, then you look at the stereotype of a female, and think, oh, I identify with that more than I do that. Yeah, I think that's what that's, it is. That is it, yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it's it's like coming to terms with the fact that you're not a macho male. Yeah. But... So in other words, everyone's just... Everyone is the same. Just different... Yeah, different levels. Yes, it. exactly. Everyone's got different uh, uh, levels of, of... I think it is chemical. I think it is testosterone. Mm. That's all it is, I think. Mm. You know, and some so some of us are, some people are more aggressive. Mm. You know, I think that's all it is. So I was, I've thought about it a lot. You know, just I want to understand the debate. Mm. So then you t- uh, you may take it to extreme and then change your body. Mm. Ah, <laughs> that's the next step. So mm. then change your body over to be this other body. But then I've thought about that is because um, if you do that, you're not really accepting yourself because you're changing it you're changing it so, yeah yeah so you're even but, doing the thing that you're trying not to do yeah you are by doing that I mean, let's think about that you're doing something you're changing yourself to fit something in, in other words you're saying i now accept myself but i now accept myself by not accepting myself no because you're changing it yeah yeah, yeah you're changing what you are really yeah exactly so, but if you like if you like looking more feminine then again that's fair enough mm. Feminine, but yeah, basically the concept of feminine, it, yeah, yeah. The, because the extreme is to look like a female. Mm. But mate, it's a scale, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah. But no, you're right. You're right. Um, so you've got to do what you want, mm. really. If you're happy looking more feminine, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought that'd be quite a nice place to end the podcast this week. I'm just actually editing it all together and we we ended up speaking for over three hours <laughs> and uh, it's quite strange how random life can be sometimes I guess but I even started playing a bit of guitar myself which I'll stick at the end of the podcast. I hope you enjoyed that one. So very random but all that's left is this week's inspirational quote and it actually goes to Nick and it is so we learn we learn by talking to each other yeah it's <laughs> a good quote that we learn by talking to each other i'm gonna actually mean something in a hundred years <laughs> yeah and people say oh that's so obvious and they say that's obvious i think it's the obvious things that people don't say that's another good quote it's the obvious things that people don't say <laughs> i'm just spewing for philosophy <laughs> and then the dreams get here as well. <laughs>